It exists on every continent of the world and affects most countries. We are talking about slavery. It's estimated at least 12 million people are forced to live in slavery around the world. More than 6 million of those are children. And more than 10,000 slaves are estimated to be living in the UK alone. Now, courts in England and Wales are to get new powers to protect people who are trafficked into the UK, held and forced to work against their will. The new measures, which were announced in the Queen's speech yesterday, form part of the modern slavery bill. Well, joining us now is the director of the oldest international human rights organisation in the world, Anti-Slavery International, Aidan McQuaid, to talk about this in more detail. Thanks very much indeed for, for coming in. What will this new, mean bill, uh, new bill mean precisely? It's still a bit sketchy at the moment because the bill itself hasn't been published, so we're waiting with bated breath to see exactly what's in it. Um, what the hints of the government have given is that there will be increased powers for police um, but there also will be some improved victim protection measures, including a statutory defence against offences that may have been committed under coercion if you're in forced labour, and importantly, uh, child protection measures and guardians for children. Some of the measures that are left out, which are very unfortunate, is that it appears that they talk about the anti-slavery commissioner as being something to have an oversight of law enforcement, where the idea which we have been pushing, which a lot of others have been pushing for, is having an anti-slavery commissioner reporting to Parliament to have an overview of government policy in slavery. And it's had no words whatsoever in it on uh, forced labour in international supply chains. So a lot of British companies are implicated in forced labour overseas but there's no uh, action on that in the bill. Well, I was going to say that because, you know, how can this bill hope to tackle a problem which so often happens outside its borders? One of the problems, uh, I saw it last week in the International Labour Conference, which is talking also improved international law on forced labour, um, is that a lot of countries take a very nationalistic, very domestic view on this issue, and it is one which is international. Particularly whenever we're talking about international business supply chains, uh, which stretch into countries like India, like Thailand, which use extensive forced labour um, of vulnerable workers, particularly migr migrants, in order to establish for themselves competitive advantage over other parts of the world. So until that sort of international extraterritorial law is put in place, we're going to see very half-hearted measures going against slavery. Your organisation, Anti-Slavery International, as we mm. said, is the oldest human rights organisation in the world. Mm. The shame is that it still has to exist mm. because how, how widespread is this problem? I mean, I think a lot of people feel that we're under the comforting myth that slavery is a thing of the past when the latest ILO estimate is that there's 21 million people at least in slavery. Um, as you said in your, your, your introduction to this, about 5.5, 6 million of them children. Between 2005 and 2012, there has been no diminution of the number of children in forced labour uh, and slavery, which suggests there's been no impact on slavery at all. And this occurred during a period when we've seen a, a remarkable reduction in child labour, so children working uh, under the um, uh, control of their families, as opposed to children who have been handed over to someone, someone else to, for slavery. So um, there's been no uh, concerted sufficient international effort against slavery. It's not even mentioned in, uh, as an international development goal. Most of the international aid agencies, most governments don't pay any attention to this anymore. Do you think sometimes some of the language we use to discuss it is problematic? We talk about human trafficking, perhaps even sort of prostitution. They're seen as different things, not actually slavery, which is, is such a, a loaded term, isn't it? Do you think we should sort of change the language we use? I think probably we should agree on what all the terms mean. I mean, there's been some confusion on terms in terms of people confuse trafficking with, uh, with people smuggling, uh, which are different things, or not necessarily the same things. People smuggling is breaking immigration offences, trafficking is moving people for purposes of forced labour. Not all prostitution is trafficking, of course. So some agreement in terms um, would be helpful so that we understand what we're talking about consistently. Whenever anti-slavery talks about slavery, we're talking about that which is defined in international law as slavery and forced labour. So I think the international law gives good guidance on what we should be meaning whenever we're talking about slavery. But we don't want this rhetorical infl inflation, say people are enslaved by poverty or drugs or something like that, because slavery is a crime which human beings do to other human beings, and we need to see that very clearly, otherwise we won't be able to tackle it properly. Quite topical at the moment is the subject about free movement within the EU. Some mm.
some mm. right-wing parties wanting uh, to, to put a stop to that. Mm. Do you think if that was curbed, that would help in your battle against slavery? Uh, the, the, uh, I think there should be greater free movement. The c control of people's movement doesn't help in the traffic against slavery. In fact, it confuses it because a lot of people think uh, immigration crime is intrinsically linked with slavery, and the truth is it's not really. Um, forced labour is what uh, is what the, the current key issue is. Unfortunately, the um, notions that the British government has of pulling out of European criminal justice measures are going to increase the difficulty in fighting against slavery because, as you pointed out, it's a transnational crime. You need transnational measures to deal with key aspects of it. And the British government's increasing isolationism and xenophobia doesn't really help that. Let's just talk now about one of your great supporters, the director Steve McQueen, who directed that uh, incredible film, Twelve Years a Slave. How important are sort of contributions from people like him who are high profile to your organisation? I, I mean, it's been hugely important. It's drawn greater attention to the matter. Um, and his voice is heard in a way, uh, and his voice is listened to in a way that ordinary punters like myself are not listened to. So the fact that uh, somebody like Steve McQueen, somebody of his integrity and, and stature, can raise his voice means it's listened to. Uh, you know, we also have uh, many great supporters like um, Hugh Quarty, who's an actor who's very high profile in the UK, has also been tireless on this also. And their voices are very, very important indeed. What are your great hopes from what we heard in the Queen's speech uh, yesterday from this bill? I, I wouldn't say I have great hopes, I have small hopes. I have small hope that this will be a small step forward, a significant step forward. Um, the initial draft bill when it was published in December last year was dreadful. So we're hoping that there's going to be some improvements in this, that it will provide proper protections for victims of slavery and it will provide proper measures which will help in the fight against that. But the British government, like all governments, need to look beyond their borders and deal with this as an international issue in terms of aid, trade and diplomacy as well as criminal justice approaches, otherwise we're not going to get anywhere fast. Okay, Aidan McQuaid from Anti-Slavery International, thanks very much Thank indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.